lots of positive comments. And, and uh, uh, I had somebody today tell me they go to another church, but they said, we don't feel nothing in our church like we do in yours. Amen. And I'm thinking. I bet I will not say one of them. Uh, but uh, I'm glad it's we got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brother Larry, I've had a Holy Ghost breakdown all by myself before. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then we got we got 25, 30, 40 people here, something like that. <laughs> and uh, we got enough, enough Holy Ghost here, yeah. enough Holy Ghost representation to do anything we need to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I saw something today that really, really impressed me. I wrote it down, scratched it down on a piece of paper, but it's talked about ministry, that their focus is to take people from being, being the crowd to being the court. Praise God. From being the crowd yeah. to being the core of the church, the yeah. core member, amen. And that excites me, and that's coming. Yeah. Amen, that's coming. So, got a lot to pray about. We want to remember, uh, uh, the Jones family, uh, Sister Barbara passed away uh, yesterday evening, and we'll be having a funeral here at the church Friday at noon. Visitation is from 10 to 12, and we will be providing them a dinner, so if some of you will be called on to help us, so please, please do that if you all possibly can. want to remember the family, and uh, I've got several unspoken requests, uh, different folks have contacted us, asking us to pray. But uh, I, I don't know that there's anything more important to pray about than, than the souls that the Lord has allowed us to be opened up to. And the things that I've heard this week, opportunities for people to witness. Uh, we, we've taken a prayer call to Brother Pete, and that's ministering to people's lives, and they haven't forgotten it. And, and we've had it. Uh, I, I can't tell you the people that have contacted me or talked to me or sent word that they watch us on the internet. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of people. God's doing great things. Yeah. Amen. Don't you let the raindrops and lightning get you across. <coughs> Don't you be discouraged. God's doing great things. Yeah. And I'm just believing that if they didn't come out tonight, that they're sitting out watching us see tonight. If they can, I don't know if we're doing it or not. Amen. But uh, 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 I believe they're out there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, and it ain't as good as being in church. And don't you ever think it is. But it's better than not being here at all. Amen. Amen. So, does anyone have a request for prayer that you want to mention over here on this side? Anybody? Sister Reed. All right. All right. And Brother Eugene? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got a friend that needs prayer. I got a couple of friends that need prayer. Sister Kessler has a, a very special request as well that she takes me about. Over here, Brother Terry.
lady said, my grandma likes that kind of music. And I said, well, I'm going to be older than your grandma. Because I like it. I like that right there. I thought they might do it one more time. But they, they act like they don't really want to sing all that. Much, so, uh, I know I'm not that old, but I've tried it. I've tried that. That's my kind of music right there. I was thinking about that jug right there, that fishing jug he's got. That must be a dime cap. I thought for a minute he found a jug was going to get some stuff to go fishing. But I'll tell you what, I'm excited about that time cap because I got to thinking, you know, 278 in Sunday school, and there's going to be some here, maybe two of us in that will be here when they open it, you know. And they're going to say, I was on the platform playing the drums, or I was doing this here. When you get a little older, that kind of stuff means something. But, uh, we need to put some stuff in there, and uh, somebody's going to enjoy it. Yeah, but the time cap is going in here in a few weeks. Because I talked to some other people around here in New Madrid, and one church had 44, one had 65. The other biggest church in town had 81. So if that tells you anything about how we're doing, we're doing good.
I ain't got the noble to say it. That's why I get aggravated and tell all y'all act like you don't know the words. And you ain't got the noble words to say it. About two times through it, you got it. I've got up here before saying so I ain't never practiced in my life before. And nobody didn't know it. So me. I can do that too. I got one right here. It says there are some things I may not know. I don't even know these. I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna laugh and make fun of the front end of the Bible. There are some places I can go. But this one thing, that's one thing. And then I got one on that hallelujah morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord. I'll have a new life. So when weak is raised in power, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord. I'll have a new life. Not determined. Brother Peter, I, 
I, I, I thought this in my mind several times this week. I, last Wednesday night, I mean, if you all saw my notes, one swipe up is all I got. <coughs> like this much. Last Wednesday night <coughs> was a possibly one of the most powerful services we've had in the last several years. Because I, I got reprimanded at the church about my middle buster decoration that I talked about putting up here. I got to find out I can't do it. Uh, at least I was told I can. Right? I said I was going to give me a middle buster. I really kind of was disappointed. I thought by the time I got back here Monday, somebody had me one. Set up right here. But uh, uh, it, it was really some, some life changing. But I made a statement. I made a statement that if you didn't get it, if you didn't get it, within two or three days, behavior directly opposing what I was teaching would rear its head. And it happened more than one time this week. This is not love. This is not so we fill up a little bit of time. This is not because I think you'd like to hear me talk. <laughs> this is life changing. I told you in the very first lesson two weeks ago, holiness is not an option. Amen. And holiness of the mind and the heart is not an option. Amen. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. He says... Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. This is important. Amen. <coughs> so, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I really want to talk to you tonight. I don't know how far I'll get in here. I told you all the first time I ever did this, but they did was, if I'm not mistaken, eight or nine weeks just on holiness of the mind in 2012. And I told you last week I'm not in any hurry. I'm not running a race. Uh, I am not. But holiness cannot be relegated to a list of do's and don'ts. <coughs> a changed mind is the basis for holiness. I want you to think about this. I added this into my notes today. It wasn't even here. But I, built, I was looking for something else in, a, in, a, in an old notebook that I had. I flipped open a couple of pages, and there it was. Think about it. Think about it like this. As we grow in the Lord, as you and I grow in the Lord, more and more of our failures and our shortcomings occur privately rather than publicly. Does that make sense? You follow me? Most of our shortcomings, most of our failures, even the sin that we might erroneously commit, is not done publicly. You know, I mean, as you grow in the Lord, most of the time it's done privately. It's an ignorant thought. Yeah. Wasting time. Yeah. More sins of omission rather than commission. Remember Sister Megan said a few years ago in the cause of the times, it's not the things that I have done that haunt me. It's the things I haven't done Amen. that haunt me. But as we grow, more and more of our failures and shortcomings occur privately rather than publicly. Now but for those of you that are scratching your head when you think about that, Here's the goal for these next few weeks as we move forward. The goal here is for us to learn. The goal, Brother Terry, is for us to learn to do damage control also privately. And our issues and our problems never making it to the surface. Because if you show your behind, and I, I mean that when I say it, 
You get out acting and act ugly, do something publicly, there's already been a problem privately that you didn't deal with. Amen. <laughs> so, we have got to learn. We have got to learn how much heartache and problems that you'll save yourself is when you recognize, uh-oh, my dumbbell bell just went off. Let me get on my face. Let me work it out with the Lord. Instead, what, what happens? This is Bible. I can back it up on the Bible. Everybody knows when you get something going wrong in your life, what is the very first thing you look to do? Exactly. Find a problem with somebody else. The Bible says it. From whence come wars and fightings among us? Come they not from unruly lust and war in your members? You're, because you haven't dealt with a private problem, it becomes public. Because you cannot be anything else on the outside than what's in the inside. You may be fool folks for a day or two or three or, or, or for a little bit, but the Bible says from the abundance of the heart that I'm speaking. Okay? So what the goal is through this teaching is for us to learn to do damage control privately. Privately. Rather than allowing it to be manifested in our public life. The guilt and discontent of a private failure must be kept private. And if you do happen to know about it, if you do happen to find out about it, if you do happen to be told about it, for goodness sake, don't tell nobody else. Amen. We have got to strive and work and, and be very purposeful about protecting one another and protecting our heart and protecting ourselves. I remember daddy, I remember a time, listen, this is just nuts, it just came to me. We were in the house prayer over here. I, why this is coming to me right now, I don't know, but we were in the house prayer, and, and mom and daddy's bedroom was, it seemed like a mile. Now, how many of y'all have lived in a single wide trailer before? When you're a little kid, how long are we? <coughs> Half a mile, at least. But my bedroom was way down on that end by the lumber stacks. I can look out my window and see Miss Taylor's beauty shop. Okay, her daughter's beauty shop. Y'all remember that? Over there, next to Sister Adams. Mom and Daddy's bedroom was all the way down at the other end. And Brother Ray, we had a kitchen right by my bedroom. And then there's a little bathroom right there off by it. And there was a bar stuck out. Remember, Mom, we had like a blue, blue bar that stuck out. I mean, we had blue shag carpet. Some of y'all don't know what shag carpet is. <laughs> We had light blue shag carpet in some spots. But Sister Pam, right that minute, just as I was speaking to you all, a thought came back in my mind. I heard my daddy, because he was a new convert back then. And if you ever knew somebody that lived, breathed, ate, slept the Word of God, it was daddy when he first got the Holy Ghost. And I heard him talking to somebody, Brother David. I mean, it's happening right now. I see it in my mind. I was like three years old. But I've never forgotten, Sister Connie, because I heard Daddy telling somebody the little foxes will spoil the vine. <laughs> yeah. Now, if we all know that those things that happen in private, those shortcomings, when you know you ain't been praying like you ought to, and when you know you missed your fast week day for like three weeks in a row, and you know that you ain't read your Bible, and you know in two and a half weeks, and, and you know that, that you looked at something you shouldn't, or you watched something you shouldn't, or you listened to something you shouldn't, or you got in a group of two or three, and you started talking about somebody when you knew you shouldn't. But our problem is, is we've never learned to keep it right there. It grows, and it manifests itself, because the little foxes, can't jump up high on the big branches. They get it at the bottom. And they destroy it at the source. So we have got to learn to, to get a hold of things and fix them when they're babies. Does that make sense? Before they begin to multiply and become a bigger problem because as it gets bigger, we want to involve more and more people. Can I get some amens? Amen. This is, this is, I feel, a very strong goal of this teaching. 
This is not just so I can say I can't hold of this again another year. This is so some things will get in our mind and in our heart that we will truly be changed. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that ye henceforth, what does henceforth mean? From now on. That, that, that right there. We, we need to get a revival of henceforth in our life. I, I, I tried to thank today, Brother Billy. I tried to wrap my mind around today. I walked around. I, I, uh, I've been going out here spreading this dirt by hand out here in the Brother Peter. I know it sounds crazy. And when I was 15, I would have laughed at somebody. But you can do some good thinking with a shovel in your hand. And I've been, I've been going out here when my mind gets clogged up, I get on that shovel and I just start spreading that dirt. And I'm thinking today and I'm trying to wrap my mind around how the Lord forgets my sins when they're over the door. Have you ever just thought about that, pondered on it? How, 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 how does that work? You know, how, how does that work? But the truth of the matter is, I'm probably, through Jesus right now, I'm probably never going to figure it out. But Brother Billy, if I ever can just grasp what it means to me, <laughs> what it means to me, him, him forgetting. How far does he cast them from? Him? As far as the east is from the west. Brother Robbie, how far is that? Nobody really knows because they ain't got there yet. Hath he removed our sins from us and cast them into the depths of the sea? He said, I will remember your sin no more. So we have got to start going forward and stop wallowing in the past. And bless God, we got to help people do that. we got to help them go forward and help them instead of helping them stay in the past. Amen. we got to move forward from henceforth, from now on. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. We've got to get that much faith in us. That henceforth. From now on, for the rest of my life. Because Brother David, he doesn't, he doesn't put a six months a year. Henceforth means from now on. So my mess ups and my mistakes and my failures and, and my wrongdoing, I got to, it's my responsibility to get it under the blood. The blood has been shed. But it's my responsibility to get it under the blood. And when it's under the blood, it's forgotten. The only memories I need to have of it is the lesson I've learned from it. So I won't do it again. Amen. From henceforth, from now on, that you walk not as other Gentiles walk. Live. That word walk means live. In the vanity of their mind. Notice the contrast. People that are living for God cannot live like the world. Now we automatically, there's a picture that pops in our mind automatically of this. When we don't live like the world, it's got to do with this. I would submit to you that that has nothing to do with what the Lord's talking about. Right. Notice he, he doesn't say it how they dress or how they look, but in their mind, in the vanity of their mind, do not live as other Gentiles. This is written to the church and not the work. The book of Ephesians is written to a church in Ephesus. And the world, the, the mindset of the world, the world system, they walk in the vanity. And what's that word vanity mean? Emptiness. The emptiness of their mind. Yeah. Amen. Think about it. How, how many ever, I, I've been talking about the Reader's Digest for a while, but we just got started back taking it. I think, I think Mama got it for us. And if you don't take the Reader's Digest, you should. It's a wonderful magazine. You ever read the, the, the column in there, that's outrageous? You ever read that? I read about some goofy dude, Brother Billy, tonight. I read about this evening. About some goofy rascal. Got brought into court for stealing the car, and he drove a stolen car to the courthouse. How much of the world 
much of the world system. Uh, I already got offended today. I got offended today, and I basically put it out there. But I am so sick and tired of people trying to tell me how to think. I'm so tired of it. That everything anybody says to you from the politics side of it is, is I, I don't know what any of them do. I'm talking about right down to the races here in town. I don't know what they're for. I don't know what they can do. All I know is what the other fella can't do. What the other fella's done wrong. I don't even know all that. Tell me what you can do. Tell me why I should like you. Tell me why I should vote for you. But that's the mindset of the world. Nobody wants the truth. Who's the biggest liar? Who can throw the most mud? Who can, who can outlast the other one? That's a vanity of the mind. We cannot ever allow that to creep in the church. Amen. We can never allow that mentality to creep in the church. Amen. The emptiness of the mind. My goodness, man, it's like, it's like sometimes. How many of you parents, how many of you got kids? How many of you ever called your kids on the carpet to get on to them about something and they lied to you? They know they're lying. You know they're lying. All their friends know you're lying. The Lord knows they're lying. And the devil knows they're lying. But you keep on playing that game. Huh? Because in my heart, I hope I'm wrong that they ain't lying. And in their heart, they're hoping I'll give up and let it go on. It's, it's the vanity. It's just a waste of time. How much stuff in the world system is such a waste of time? How many times have you sat in front of your television or the internet or watched the movie and when you got done, you feel like you need a bath? Yeah. 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 Say, man, I need to be nasty. I'm not talking about watching nasty stuff. I'm talking about waste of time. Yeah. Boy, I'm smarter than that. I got more sense than that. What a word I think I'm doing. I must be doing some good tonight. Yeah. It's the world system. Yeah. Look here. I'm, I'm really, man, I may not get any further. I knew that when I studied this. I may not get any further. Having the understanding darkened. What, what does that mean to you? What is understanding? Knowledge. Knowledge. It's rich a catchphrase in school now. The ACT has a whole section that says this. Reading and comprehension. What can you comprehend? What can you learn? Having the understanding darkened. What does that always mean in the Bible? Limited. Partial. Yeah. Hindered. Hampered. <laughs> diminished. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I want you to notice this. This is a powerful passage of scripture right here. Their understanding is dark. It's diminished. Now, th think about it just for a minute. Don't walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Because their understanding is darkened. What's the contrast to that? Light. The, that's what the church is. It's light. Their understanding has been light. That's the difference. Brother Billy, the Bible very clearly says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why? God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine in unto them. Their understanding is diminished, it's dark, and it's, it's just like you, you, you can live in a house for 50 years and the power go out and you fall over something. After you try to turn the light on. Because when you can't see, come on now. When you can't see, I get up out of our bed, I got two steps to get into the hallway, Brother David. I have run slap into the wall, man. Has anybody else ever done that before? And then all the way down the hall, Brother, Brother, Brother Terry, it's like 
eight feet, and it's this wide. There's guardrails on the side, but I've hit every wall on all sides going down to the bathroom and then running to the door. Why? It's dark. It's dark. Not only is it dark, Brother Pete, I'm fuzzy. connotation ignorance. It's a but, but I want you to think about this just for a minute. And let's let's kind of pull this out. Ignorance then is a lack of something. But the Bible said ignorance then says for it would be nothing. But it said the nothing oh I can preach man. How much, how much junk, God, mercy on you. This, this, is, this is my favorite part of the year. I love it. I love it because, Brother Terry, every time I preach the same stuff, some of it's the same notes, but it's like it's all new. Sister Maria, how much stuff is the world constantly lambasted with that's nothing? It's nothing. Nothing. Come on, man. I, how long since you've really had an intelligent conversation with somebody about something? I mean, really? People are so enamored. Look at your, when you pull up your Yahoo and, and look at your email or something, go down there to the bottom sometime and look at all in the ads that's on there. Brother Robbie, it's just crazy stuff, man. There's so much in the world of nothing. I'm ashamed sometimes. I, like we were talking about Abraham Lincoln, uh, 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 Garrison, and, and Paige and myself. We had an old, old $5 bill. And they looked a whole lot different. And, and Amanda said, well, that's just 1995. I said, that, that's 21 years ago now. <laughs> oh. But Abraham Lincoln. How many ever read Abraham Lincoln's story? Of how he... But you know, you know, Brother David, he did fail as an adult. But you want to know why did he succeed? Because he got his education <laughs> using, using charcoal stuff by the fire line in Kentucky right on a shovel. I read that story. No education. Except what he dug out himself. And we've got politicians and stuff today that have the audacity. To act like those guys were ignorant. And that is the foundation of all And I'm not going to get all political on you. But I am patriotic. And that's the foundation that this country was built on. Is hungry men and women that dug it out themselves. This country didn't just fall out of the sky to us. 
People lived and died for it. God have mercy on us. If we don't stand up and realize what this world, and I mean no disrespect, but this world is going to hell in a handbasket. Right. And, 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 and it's almost like they're happy to do it. And I'm about to show you why. I'm not, I'm not going to be a long time tonight because I, I'm really, when I remember, I think this was last year that this was one of those things that got, got thrown out to me. Look here, having their understanding darkened. And when you're ignorant, when you don't know, you're separated from God. Now, you have got to, and you have got to receive this. We do not have the option. We do not have the option to just be content with Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday being all the knowledge we gain. You have got to. You're studying. You're growing. You're Becoming more learned in the things of God is not to please me. The book says, study to show thyself approved unto God. And if you do not try to say, well, I don't understand the Bible very well. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There is so much available nowadays. There's so much available. I got a deal the other day. I took it off my phone because I didn't need it. It took up a lot of room. That's a story for another time. But you can get an app on your phone where you plug your headphones in and somebody will read the Bible to you while you go around and about your business through the day. Brother David, I got it while I was walking. I got rid of it about the time I quit walking. But You've got to get a hunger for more of him. And our our guarantee, sure fire forever connection. Right there. It's right there. It's that word. It's that word. It's that word of God. We are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, the nothing, the no knowledge that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. Now, I've talked to you before many times how the translators from the original Greek and Hebrew in different translations, but the King James Version, because that's the primary version we use. That's what all of my Bibles are. And I, I have some different versions, English Standard Version, the New King James Version. And I, I have the uh, www.biblehub.com that shows you about 14 different versions. And one of them is, is the, the Bible in Aramaic directly from Aramaic, which is most likely the, the language that Jesus spoke. Though I learned in Israel that it appears Jesus probably spoke three different languages at the very least, but Aramaic was the, the language of the time. And different Bibles tell you tell you different uh, different viewpoints and perspectives, and, and uh, it, it's wonderful to be able to do that. But that word blindness, in many other translations, is rendered hardness. Now, blindness fits the context of the scripture. Are you following me? The understanding dark of the blindness of their heart. But notice I said, according to the English Standard Version, it calls it the hardness of their heart. And when we automatically, when we think about well, what, what, what comes to your mind? Like I said, I'm not going to be a whole lot longer because I want to us to, there's some things we've got to realize when we come here. Do you remember last week? How many were not here last week? How many were not here? Just two or three weren't here last week. Uh, Brother Ben was here part of the time, though. Uh, when I talked about even, even holiness, the way people dress, 
the people in the world, that they do not wake up in the morning and say, let me see how I can risk to be against what God wants. They don't. They, they, don't, they don't set out to be rebellious. It's, it's the way of the world. And we've got to understand that. Okay, everybody that gets out, gets up in the morning, and, and you know, they got to get up like an hour early because they got to paint up and, and they, and they got to they gotta do all of this stuff and, 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 and they dress ungodly and they dress immoral and, and they half dress and barely dress and, and, and all of that. They're not doing that. They're not doing that to stub their nose at the church or at the Lord. It's the way of the world. It's a way of life. And, and now we're, 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 Brother David, what, what uh, 80, 80, 80 years and 90 years? Uh, what is, they usually say a generation is about 20 years, Brother David, we're four or five generations in, into uh, the way of the world as it is now. These people, they, they're not. And, and, but then I said, if you remember, I said, we, because we've been around this, since Paul King was a sardine, we, we, we know how to look and we know how to be Pentecost. But yet, we'll say, we'll say things and talk about people and be critical and, 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 and let ungodliness come out of us. But we'll pull out a tape measure and check somebody's head line. And I talk about if we, if we would focus as much on keeping the hearts of our children as we have to make it look good on the outside, but if they hear you gossip and they hear you backbite and then you're constantly having to tell them to go on so you talk bad about somebody. That's right. Same thing applies to us. Just like the people of the world get up and, and they dress the way of the world because they, that's their life. They don't know any better. But we have become so accustomed to having diarrhea out of the mouth that we just expect it. We're not bad. We're not mean. We're not waking up in the morning and see what kind of trouble we can cause. And it's just become a something people do. Something people are comfortable with because it's a way of life. And I am under every bit of a burden at all serious that I can tell you. You are, I'm nobody's judge. But unless we change, there are going to be people that look at the stock, that walk at the stock, that, 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 that they, they've never done anything wrong to speak of. But because they've not got their heart and life fixed, they're going to stand before God and be laughing. We have got to become, become aware of that. We've got to become aware of that. We don't have the right. And we've got to be shaken into awareness. I want you, that's so important because of that word right there, blindness or hardness. That is so important that we grasp a hold of that. So important because, and I'm about to, that word blindness or hardness. Yes, come here. see the tip of his finger right there? Can you see that? Kind of a kind of a bruise type deal. Well, let's walk around and show some more of them. <laughs> While I got you up here, I'm going to take advantage of it. Can you see that? Y'all see that? You see that? Does anybody in the back want to see it? I'm going to show you. Brother Billy said he'd like to see it. We're talking about blindness. Oh, you lose something. <laughs> see that? See that? See that? Did y'all see that? See that on his finger right there? Does anybody know what that's called? That's not a blister. It's not a wart. It's called a callus, Brother David. And it's from, it's from the old baseball. Over, 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 over. I don't have as many as I used to, but they're still there. I'm going to shovel them from a hammer. That word blindness is the same word as callous. Callous. Does anybody know how to get a callous? Oh, that's right, but that's oversimplification. 
A catalyst is when it's when it's broke open. And he goes, broke open, and he goes, broke open, and he goes, broke open, and he goes, until it forms a hardness. Please, please don't get away from me. I'm trying to, I'm really trying. This is, this is so, baby, don't be mad at me, okay? Because this is so important, what I'm about to say. This is so important. Because I want everybody to go from being the crowd to the core. <laughs> Having no understanding, darling, being alienated, being alienated from the life of God. So the problem happens through the ignorance, lack of knowledge that is in them. Why? And why do they, please don't, don't turn me off. Carly, you need to listen to this, baby. You need to listen to this because if you young people can get this in your spirit right now, you won't have to go through a whole lot of the heartaches that I've had to go through. Because I used to sit where you sit. And listen to me. I used to, and I'm really sorry, Brother King, I've told you this before, but I used to think, oh my goodness, Bible study again. But I found out if I would listen, not only listen, if I would listen and apply that word to my life. I told you about this the other night, Sister Leanna. If I heard Brother Kenny teach once, I heard him teach a thousand times over my 40 something years. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, Arise and go to the potter's house. I heard Brother Kenny teach that so many times. I heard Brother McKinney teach about the abomination of desolation in the book of Daniel and also in the book of Revelation. I, I heard so many things. I want you to listen to me. You've got to see this. And you got my point about that because this is having the understanding darkened. We've already talked about that. Somebody tell me what, what does that mean now? Their understanding darkened. Don't know where you're going. They're understanding. They can't comprehend it. The understanding is dark, Brother Terry. And they are alienated, separated, or a stranger to. Do you follow me? <laughs> From the life of God. Yeah. The Bible is the most beautiful thing in the world. They are a stranger. Sister Leanne, that's why it doesn't make sense to the world. To believe you got to change to be right with God. They don't get it. Why? Why do they not get it? Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Why are they still ignorant? Because, don't forget now, because of the callous. Now, if they're watching tonight, They'll do what I'm talking about. Nobody else will work with it. But I talked to a backslider today. I text messaged him. And uh, I, I made a comment about something. About feeling the Holy Ghost. About feeling the power of the Lord. And they said, oh, I still feel it every day. I just don't listen. But I'm about to get middle mustard again. Favorite. How does it callous? How do you get callous? Brother, Brother Ray, you never get a callous. I, I know you told me about you busted your fingers open. Just cast and cast and cast and cast. You want that that's like for the people. You do not. You cannot. Sit there and look at that rod reel. Calluses pop out on your hands. So what? Why is their heart hard? I had somebody tell me today. Here, here again. I've got to be careful about now that I'm on TV or whatever. Now that I'm on, they're going to put me in the movies. <laughs> All they're going to do is I have mad for me. I talked to somebody else today. <clears throat> They told me that they believe in the Holy Ghost and they speak in tongues. And, 
and they told me, I began to explain to them how you get the Holy Ghost, and they said, it's happened to me so many times. It was just right there, but I wouldn't do it because I was scared. <coughs> Is anybody quite comfortable? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, brother. Think about it. How do you get a callus? The skin is broke. But then it's broke. Then it heals and it makes a little shell. And you know, brother people, when you go back to the top field, you gotta break open again. Brother Terry, and then, then it'll be over. And then Brother Billy, it'll break open again. And then it'll be over. But you don't get to the place, Brother Chris, that it gets so hard it won't break open anymore. But we're not talking about hands, Brother Billy. We're not talking about feet. We're talking about a heart. You're exactly right, Brother David. The Spirit of God. This is the world he's talking about. The Spirit of God. Breaks you. You breaks you. You hard up. Think about it. You think about it just for a minute. You think about 9 11. How many remember where you were at 9 11? I remember where I was in the bed. I was working the night shift at the boys' ranch then. And Brother Ford called me about 8 o'clock in the morning. And he said, Man, you got to listen to the news. But you think about it just for a minute. People rush to the church house. They filled up everywhere. People, the president, God bless America. And you know something, Brother Billy? Nobody cares. Yeah. You know something, Brother Billy? There's a reason why the Bible says He's given us all things that pertain to the life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. The reason why the world is in such a mess as it's in is because the Lord has dealt with them and dealt with them and dealt with them and dealt with them. And they turned Him away. And they turned Him away. And they turned Him away. And now they can't. You say, well, you just got through saying they're not bad. They're not. But the Bible very clearly tells us in verse 18, Brother Shannon, they don't know. And that they are ignorant, and they remain ignorant. Why? Because their hearts got hard, and nothing, nothing can get through to them anymore. You think about where the world is now morally. You think about what happened in Georgia today. You think about what's happening in the news every day. Think about three days ago. That some sicko goes to a park. And blows himself up and kills 65 Christians. Wounds over a hundred young people. You think about it in Pakistan. Christians! It's just news, Brother David. It's just news. And in Georgia, they will pass laws to shut the preacher up. They will, they will veto laws that have been passed. The brother, brother Pete, they ain't about discriminating against nobody. They ain't about hurting nobody. All it was was let the church be the church. Yep. I ain't going to nobody's house and messing with what they do. I ain't going to nobody's life. You know something, Brother Billy? I, I, I don't go into the beer joint and, and pull a carry nation and get out of the axe and start beating around. I don't do that. But I want this to be a sanctuary, a holy place. I want to be able to preach truth. I want to be able to preach separation. I want to be able to preach holiness. Let me tell you why I'm going to keep preaching this. It's because there's coming a day very soon. And I realize that we are setting ourselves up by putting ourselves out there. 
But Brother Pete, I have an obligation to somebody higher than the laws of this land. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's only one way to preach it. That's for holiness. Do you think where the world's at right now? Brother Billy and I talked about this. And then I talked to Doug about it at the barbershop yesterday because, you know, he's asking about our, how we did Easter. And, the, and everybody wants to know. Everybody's asking, you know, well, what do you do? And I, I've, even, I've even had church folks that they, they believe we're going to hell come asking me questions about, man, what you got going? Looks like you got some good things going down there. I see it on Facebook. And, and I see people that, that now they're on, now they're on to, to infidels that are coming by our church on Sunday morning just see how many people's here. Happened this week. Brother Kenny, I, I hear there's people poking Brother Kenny at the coffee shop asking him about the church. But Brother Billy, when we had 275, it was the day when everybody went to church. Brother Robbie, when you and I were little fellas, Everybody went to church somewhere. You go down Dayton Street over here, and when you turn the corner off Church Street, Brother Pete, you couldn't even get down the road. Presbyterian lot was full. Catholic lot was full. Baptist lot was full. Pentecost lot was full. Everybody went to church back then. What's happened to our world? They love Billy, it ain't because they don't like us, it ain't because they don't care, but because of the hardness of their heart. You see that, Brother Ray? Because of the hardness of their heart, they stay in here. They can't get it. They can't get it. That's why they'll come to our church and they'll say, I don't feel this in my church. I don't experience this in my church. It ain't happening like this in my church. What I'm trying to tell us is this relates to urgency that we face in reaching a world that is rapidly becoming more and more desensitized to sin. Yeah. And God have mercy on us yeah. if we feel like it, things that are very necessary. That's the mentality of the world creeping in. And you hear me well, saints of, of God, saints of New Madrid and the surrounding areas. If we don't heed the word of God. There's only so many times. You hear me and hear me well. There's only so many times that you'll hear this word and you'll have it peel your heart off. And you'll have it. That's why last Wednesday night I was I was so concerned is because you feel the urgency and you feel the Lord pulling in people's hearts. But it's Wednesday. Yeah, come on. Now, if I feel that on Sunday, I'm there. But it's Wednesday. But how many times are you just going to keep on sitting there? <laughs> and let the word of God convict you. You say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. That's who the book of Ephesians is written to. <laughs> but I got the Holy Ghost. You cannot continue to allow the word of God to rip you and walk away until the car is over. Because the Bible says Don't be two to me. But there's only one taken and one left. Don't be two in the field. One taken and one left. Two in the bed. One taken and one left. How many times? How many times? You think about this. How many times are you going to feel the urge? You I'm just going to wait all minute right now. What happened? What happened? Because when you first got the Holy Ghost, we couldn't hold tight into your chair. When you first got the Holy Ghost, you was running. And I remember, I was 13, 14 years old, didn't matter how school, rally, girls everywhere, pretty girls. And I, that was, you know, back in the day. Before I had a head like a pumpkin and a, and a belly that was like the old beach ball and, and everything. But you know, so Brother Terry, it didn't matter. As soon as I felt the Holy Ghost, I'm out there. I'm in the aisle. I couldn't ask no better back then than I can now. What happens? 
to our responsiveness to the Holy Ghost? What happens to our sensitivity to the Spirit? I want you to ask yourself this question. How about my heart? Am I still moved like I used to be? Does bowed his head and said it's finished. Does it still give me gold chills like it used to? Does then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Does it still make your heart speed up? Do I still want to bow my head down? When I read the book back in the Bible, when it says, even so, come Lord Jesus. What I'm trying to tell you is that same desensitization that the world is facing can happen to you right here on this church. The world we're in, I had a conversation with somebody today, the world we're in, the things are rapidly coming to a head. Jesus is soon to return for his church. We're reaching a world that's becoming more and more desensitized. But it also faces, it illustrates the peril that we face if we continue to remain willfully ignorant. You say, well, I, I don't know about it. I know exactly about it. it happens to all of us. A Monday night after you have a throw down Sunday night service. Just a brief prayer meeting always is a little bit more people. Brother Billy, right after a good service, there's more people willing to make phone calls. Then something happens. There's something better to do. Something more important to do. <coughs> I'll tell you right now, I don't come every time. There's things that I know sometimes I'm going to be a daddy. Going to. I expect you to. But you know what? I'm here, Sister Leanne. But I've also got this same fear. Brother David, I have to pray and I have to ask the Lord, don't let me become a sis. Don't let me become a whim. Don't let me become desensitized. Don't let me fall prey to the you're just old fashioned. Because there's a truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You don't come to the Father any other way but by Him. And Brother Robert, His way is clear, it's called Calvary. Well, you're supposed to be teaching holiness. I am. I am. I thought, I'm going to say that. I can to somebody on the phone today. I can fix a neckline. I can fix a hairline. I can fix a hemline. I can loosen up something. I can lift something out. I can change a whole lot of stuff on the outside. That That stuff don't bother me. It don't bother me. Because it can be fixed. It can be fixed. But I was so worried about heart. Because Brother Pete, he said it very plainly in 1 Samuel chapter number 16. He said, you're the one that looks on the outside. He said, but I look on the inside. Because Eliab looked like a king. Eliab looked like a king. But he was hanging out at daddy's house while the little red-faced boy was in the pasture. Standing with his 